So for this video, I will be showing you guys how to get the latest custom firmware for your Pocket Go. So the custom firmware I'm going to show you how to get is the latest one you can get, but it's not really much of an upgrade on the current firmware. The current firmware on this is actually very good. So let's just take a look at it quickly. Um, I have got a whole review video on this, but this is all everything it emulates. So as you can see, quite a lot of stuff. The new firmware does emulate a few more things. I know it's got Pokemon Mini on there, um, maybe a few other things as well, but we can always check that out. So yeah, the reason why you might want to get this is if you want to play Pokemon mini games, if you want to upgrade your SD card, or if you have some problems with this firmware, that is the only reason why you might want to upgrade. But the SD card I currently have, the one mine came with, was 8GB. I'm going to be upgrading it to this one. This is a 16GB SD card. This is just so I can fit more games on here, um, if it even focuses. And it has some more um, emulators and stuff like that on, which we can try and copy across. So the first thing we need to do is just make sure our Pocket Go is powered off. And we will need to take out the SD card. So just go and power it off just like that. Now what we're going to do is just go and disconnect the SD card from it. Now you can upgrade this SD card of the firmware, or you can get a new one. I'm going to use a new one just because I want to keep a backup of the original, and I want a larger size one as well. So I'm going to connect this to my computer via this adapter. So let me just go and connect that now and I will show you guys what to do once we're back. Okay, so quickly on our computer, the first thing we need to do is make sure our SD card is plugged in and we actually need to format it. So this could be a brand new SD card or it could be the SD card it comes with. It's entirely up to you. If it's the one it comes with, you might want to back up the ROMs first. But we're going to go to right click, we're going to select format, um, for the capacity, just leave that. For file system, we're going to select XFAT. For the allocation size, we can set that to default. If you want to give it a name, you can just call it SD, SD card, anything you want to really. Make sure quick format is ticked. We're going to click on start and then click on OK. And that's pretty much it. Our SD card is now formatted. As you can see, it says format complete. We can click on OK and now click on close. Now, if your SD card is not displaying or it's the one it comes with, so it's got loads of partitions on it, what you want to do is go to the search icon down here if you're on Windows 10 and type in disk management or just disk partitions anything like that and it's going to come up with this create and format hard disk partitions click on this one and this is what you will use if your SD card is not displaying or if it has a ton of partitions on it so it's going to open down here you can click on it and as you can see mine's got a partition but what you would do is right click and you'd select delete volume and then you can always just add a new volume to it and then yeah that's pretty much it you just right click delete volume or you can format it and um, this is just another way of formatting SD cards on Windows and um, yeah that's pretty much it so once you have got your SD card and it's formatted you want to go to the link in the description of this video now on this web page we can actually get the Pocket Go firmware this also has BitBoy firmware on here and um, this is a screenshot so this is what it's looking like that's actually looking pretty cool so what we want to do is scroll down and we're going to find it the pocket go section all you want to do is click on the image of the pocket go and it's going to open up a mega link this is the firmware that we need to get so I've already downloaded it just to save time but as you can see it's around about a gigabyte so it might even be larger when it's extracted but all you want to do is just click the download button it will actually have a green download button right here as you can see for me it says save that's because I've already downloaded it so make sure to download this and then what you want to do is go and find it in your download Downloads folder. Okay, so over to my downloads folder. This is exactly what it looks like. It's going to come in a zip file for us. And what we want to do from here is right click and select extract here. We're going to start extracting this zip file. Now, there's one more thing we actually need to get, and that is the software to mount this image onto our SD card. Now, that software is called um, the 32 Disk Imager. So I'm just going to show you guys that right now. So this will also be linked in the description. This is a very useful program to have. I use this quite a lot of times. Um, it's not just for this. You can format SD cards for tons of different consoles and for you know SD cards and stuff. Anyway, it's called the Win32 Disk Imager. Um, pretty common sense. You just click on the green download button right here and we're going to download this as well. I've already got this installed, but it's very simple. Just like any program, you click on it and you click next a few times and you can just get this thing installed in like a few seconds. So there you go. It should download it in about 12 seconds and once it it has finished downloading what you can do is you can actually click on it to open it and you can just go through the setup process so it's very very simple right go 
is, so it's going to open up like this. You just need to click I accept, click next, next again, and you can basically install it. As I said, I've already got it. I don't need to install it again. And there you go. That's pretty much it for installing this. And now our um, image should have extracted from our SD card. So you want to go back to your search icon and we're going to find it. So we're just going to type in Win32 and it should actually come up. Here it is. So I'm just going to click on this to go and open it. Just click on yes if it comes up with any like notification. And there you go. We are on the software. So in the software, the first thing you want to do is just make sure your SD card is selected. As you can see, mine has the letter H. Make sure you do not get this wrong. Now we're going to click on this blue folder icon so we can find our image file. And our image file should be in our downloads. You can just locate to it if it's in some kind of folder. And then we're just going to click on open. Um, everything else you can just leave as it is. And we actually just want to click right. Um, make sure you've backed everything up because this is going to wipe it and then click yes. Okay, so now we're going to wait for our image to write in onto our SD card. This can take some time. Um, I'll tell you how long it took when it's done. I'm going to say right now maybe about 10 minutes or something like that. So I will be back when it's done um, and then we can copy across some ROMs when it's done and we can check out this brand new firmware. All right, guys, so you can see the time down there. Um, that's around 14 minutes, 13 minutes and 52 seconds. It's now going to say right successful. We can click on OK. And what it's going to do is open up just a ton of rubbish. We all have to close all of this stuff. Basically, because it's in a weird kind of partition, um, Windows is trying to format it. We do not want to format it. So make sure you click on Cancel, OK, and just close down all of these file explorers, which will open. And there you go. That is it. We can now click on Exit. And if you take a look at our SD card, we're going to have two sections, the boot section and the main section. Well, we also have four sections but these are the two which are kind of these are the two which we actually need now the other important section is the rom section right here this is where we can put all of our game roms so as you can see it's empty um, but if you back them up previously then we can add them across so i've actually got some roms so i'm going to add these across so this is kind of like my ROM section on my computer. Every time I get one of these SD cards on a device, I drag and drop all the ROMs across. And as you can see, I have got tons and tons of random games. So I'm gonna to go to the main section. We're going to open up the ROM section, which is down here, and we can start dragging across games. So this is Game Boy Advance. Let's put some Game Boy Advance across there into the Game Boy Advance folder. I've also got some Game Boy Color ROMs on here. I just noticed this also supports Pokemon Mini, so I guess that's a new update. Anyway, let's find some other ROMs, um, Game Boy Advance or Game Boy Color, we can put some of those across as well. So there's the Game Boy Color section, you guys get the idea, you select the ROMs you want and you just drag them across to the sections. So you've got a few ROMs on there, I don't know if I have any Pokemon Mini ROMs on here. Um, yeah, I don't know if I have any. But yeah, that's pretty much it. We've now got some ROMs on here. Now you can browse through. We've got the main section as well. The boot section. There's also Game Boy Color. I believe you can put ROMs into these um, sections as well. And um, yeah, so that is pretty much it. That is how you configure it. So what we're going to do, we're going to go back onto it. And let's check out this new operating system. All right, guys, so once we're back off our computer, we can go ahead and put in our new SD card. Obviously, make sure your BitBoy is powered off before you go and put it in. And now just move your old one out of the way and let's just go and power it on. Okay, so there you go, it's powered on and it's looking very similar. It looks like it just has a different theme and some different wallpaper on here. But let's just scroll through everything. So as far as I remember, apps are the same. Emulators, let's take a look. Everything else looks the same. Mega Drive. Oh, we've got Atari on here, so I think that is new. Did we have Atari on the last one? I don't know. Um, we've got DOS on here. Um, we have got Pokemon Mini, that's definitely new. And that looks like it. That looks like it. So is it just Atari and Pokemon Mini? PC Engine, was that on there as well? I can't remember. But it looks like we've got a couple of extra things on here. On ports, I think everything else is the same. Maybe there is a few small extras. And um, we've got Open Bot, that was probably on the last one as well. So yeah, maybe a few small extras have been installed, but nothing like major. Settings is the same. We can press A to go into settings. Actually, if we go back on this, which is start, we can actually change the skin. I think what they've done is they've actually added lots more wallpapers in. So let's just have a look. Oh, there you go. We've got some nice BitBoy wallpaper. That looks quite cool. Wait, BitBoy? This is the Pocket Go. Why has it got BitBoy wallpaper on the Pocket Go? <laughs> and then we've obviously got the skin up here as well, which you can change. Oh, that one looks pretty cool. That fits really well with this theme. I don't think that was on the last one. So let's press start, give it a reboot. And there you go. Now we've got this SNES skin. That looks very, very cool. And, um, okay, I recognize this theme. So yeah, we've got the Pokemon Mini on there. I don't know if we had Atari. Maybe we did. Maybe it's just Pokemon Mini that's new. Could literally be just that. 
and then obviously we've got all the um, games and stuff, all these homebrew apps. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll tell you what, let's give it uh, give it a quick load, let's give Game Boy Advance a load, why not? And um, what we have got on here, I just copied across some random games. The Santa Claus 3, what the heck is that? Uh, Tony Hawk, there you go, that's a good game. Let's load up some Tony Hawk. And um, yeah, that is the custom firmware. I'd say the only reason why I might want to get this, if I'm a massive Pokemon Mini fan, or um, if my SD card's corrupted or something like that, you know, it's just some extra firmware you can just add to it if you've got nothing else. And um, yeah, it's pretty much the same. It will run perfectly fine and everything like that. So that is the custom firmware. And let me just enter in some random name. Let me just prove that this actually works. So you go on Tony Hawk, the game loads perfectly fine and um, everything like that. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. That is how you load your custom firmware. Um, very easy to load, I guess. And, um, you know, it's just some spare firmware if you ever need it. So if you guys enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next one.